Hi, I am Ashleen Wright, the Director of Product at EDB for our cloud offerings. And today I'm excited to talk to you about what to consider when you know, migrating your database workloads from Oracle to the cloud. So just to level set, you know, we know enterprise database workloads are complicated and moving to the cloud just adds another layer of complexity to that journey. Here at EDB, we get that and we hear it oftentimes from our own customers. So today I'd actually like to kind of walk you through um, a scenario where if you've got Oracle workloads and you're looking at adopting Microsoft Azure, what are the options available to you? I'm gonna walk through a few different options to consider and mostly centered around kind of, you know, what is available to you and, and what deployment pattern that looks like. So the first one is looking at infrastructure as a service. If you were to run Oracle licenses on Azure infrastructure and self-manage that environment, what does that look like to you? And what are some of the considerations for you? And the second is actually looking at platform as a service offering directly via Microsoft Azure um, through their own Azure database for Postgres offering. And then lastly is looking at platform as a service offering via a partnership. So, so what are some of the things that you know you want to look to consider um, for other partners out there? And I'll shed a little bit more light on kind of what's available from an Oracle specific perspective. So starting with the first scenario, I think it's it's worth looking at this from a perspective of, you know, being able to lift and shift your workload to the cloud. So you still get the added benefits of, of moving to the cloud, but it's important to consider two aspects when, you know, you were running Oracle on Azure infrastructure. So the first is price. So if you were to run your Oracle databases on infrastructure as a service, you'll probably still face the same challenges that you would in an on-premises environment. Um, so for example, some of the licensing costs, some of the contract terms, that wouldn't necessarily go away. So I think that's important to kind of consider and be eyes wide open when you're looking to move to the cloud. And the second is, you know, if you continue to maintain that Oracle investment, it could make it difficult to actually embrace cloud and open source technology. So you're going to be moving to cloud. Your teams will have to get acquainted with <clears throat> some of the new skill sets, some of the cost structures, and also thoughtfully think through how to actually run Oracle in that cloud environment. So you are going to still face sort of some of those same skill challenges. And in addition to that, you potentially might have an issue in terms of embracing new open source technology. Depending on kind of where your investments are focused, you're still going to have to maintain the level investment for Oracle. And it could be a little bit more difficult for you to actually embrace um, a broader set of open source technology. With that said, this is an absolutely viable option for folks to consider, but I think it's important to lay out um, these considerations as you, as you look to move towards the cloud. The second option that I want to expand on and, and look at is moving towards an open source Postgres offering on cloud and specifically um, a platform as a service offering. So for today's discussion, I'll, I'll focus mostly on Azure Database for Postgres. So, you know, as an example, you'll get some of the great benefits of a fully managed cloud service, um, albeit there are somewhat limited replication models. So for example, if you have Oracle Rack, that is a use case that likely is not gonna be addressed through kind of a PaaS Postgres offering that exists today. In addition to that, compatibility um, for the database, the application, are also considerations where when you're moving from Oracle 
to open source Postgres, there are some complexities in terms of migrating off Oracle that I think are important to understand. So I'll spend a minute diving a little bit deeper into um, what to consider there. So I had previously mentioned, you know, looking at a migration, it's, it's a lot more than the database. So it's important for you to look at schemas. For example, you know, mapping the data types between sort of source target, um, handling syntax differences. In addition to that, the data itself. So how you're gonna get the data in, you know, what tools are available to you at your disposal for that migration. And then on the infrastructure point, you know, in terms of where it's getting deployed, um, any potential optimization or performance implications for that are important to consider. And then on the application itself, you're going to have to assess kind of what the impact to that application code will be. For example, other things like what connectors or drivers that you're using to connect are also important considerations. These just highlight kind of some of the high level examples of making sure that you're considering all aspects and facets of the actual migration itself. And when moving from Oracle to an open source Postgres offering, you know, these can be a bit daunting. And when we actually talked to our customers, we ran a survey a little while back through EDB and we asked customers what their biggest obstacles were when they were migrating from Oracle to Postgres. And, you know, interestingly enough, the responses were pretty varied. And I think that speaks to the point that it's not just the database. So cost, you know, funny enough, that was actually the smallest portion. And as I would expect, that's a big motivator for customers. But beyond that, the data definitions, the stored procedures, you know, what proprietary drivers you're using today um, and how do those map to Postgres? You're gonna have to actually rework all of that and then lastly, migrating the data. So I think all these sort of speak to the fact that there are other challenges um, beyond just sort of a simple move to Postgres. So it's important to really be considerate of these when actually assessing what you're going to do for the migration. And then the third option that I want to talk through is looking at another platform as a service offering, but from a partnership perspective. And I would encourage folks to, to take a deeper look at EDB. So EDB has built-in Oracle compatibility and you can still get the benefits of a fully managed cloud service alongside um, some of the benefits of Oracle compatibility as well. So EDB has sophisticated replication models to actually be able to address multi-region geo-distributed high availability workloads that can really tap into those customers that are using Oracle Rack. And in addition to that, there is a simplified effort. As we previously saw, you know, when looking at stored procedures, data definitions, like the syntax differences, all those come into play when you're migrating. And a lot of that is simplified actually through EDB's offering. So I'm going to expand a little bit on what are the differences? You know, when you look at open source Postgres and EDB's Oracle compatibility, what do those differences look like? So I'm going to share two different views for you. So we actually ran some data about our own migration customers and observed what some of the occurrences were of kind of what was going on with their own Oracle workloads. So for example, we saw that 17% of all the schemas that we analyzed, which was over 2 million um, DDL objects or constructs, we found that 17% of the schemas had at least one reference to Pragma autonomous transaction. And 15% had at least one hint. And 36% were actually referring to at least one of the EDB supported Oracle packages. And this was important for customers actually moving in their journey to Oracle. So from kind of a, an initial data set of over 2 million DDL constructs, you know, these are kind of highlights of, of what actually came out of it with what we saw and observed kind of in their Oracle workloads. 
And just to give you a sense kind of visually between, you know, the client interfaces, how you connect the actual core database itself, and then the utilities available to you, there's a pretty stark difference between what Postgres natively has compared with EDB's Oracle compatibility. So EDB's Oracle compatibility um, offering, it actually embeds PostgreSQL. So it comes with all of the native PostgreSQL functionality, but it adds on a layer um, that provides Oracle compatibility. So for example, we've built out specific drivers that are compatible with Oracle. So, you know, that challenge of, you know, roughly the customers that said some of their biggest obstacles were actually migrating the drivers over. So coming to EDB and having that functionality available to customers is, is a huge benefit. In addition, just on the, on the database itself, so things like the, the parser and the actual optimizer itself, there's built-in logic that EDB has to actually cater to and address some of the Oracle-specific um, capabilities. And just to kind of round it out, why should you even kind of consider EDB and how, how can EDB help? Well, we're excited to launch Big Animal, which is our fully managed cloud offering on Microsoft Azure. And it brings the benefit of a fully managed cloud service with the Oracle compatibility to market. Both of those things together really haven't existed in the space today. So we're bringing customers Postgres expertise, Oracle compatibility, and continuous availability, and all while supporting customers on their Postgres journey wherever they are. So if you're migrating off Oracle, moving to Azure, and still have a subset of your workload on premises, EDB is here to actually support you where you are. With that, I recommend that you check out the resources linked in this session to connect with an EDB Postgres expert about your projects. And thank you so much for your time today and I really appreciate it.